Fast forward 24 hours, here we are. OEM Toyota head gasket. I got the full gasket kit from Thank You to Battle Garage. Uh, wiped down the cylinders a little bit, cleaned off the piston tops. We're just about ready to put the head back on. Yeah, you guys who are fans of the podcast, here it is. Mr. Schubert's signature. 2011, Mr. Schubert ported this cylinder head. These were full of junk too, like stuck, so did my best to uh, get all these deposits out. But yeah, you can see the port work. I previously put ARP studs in here. I thought these were the old style studs where one of these uh, contacted the distributor, so you'd have to grind off the end of this distributor. Um, but I'm going to put these back in and see what happens again because I have another set. I have another uh, customer set on the shelf and all the studs are long like this, so I got to see what's up. Either that sets the wrong one or I put these in wrong, something happened, but. What is this monstrosity? So, slimline, 16 valve, rear head outlet from SQ Engineering. Bottom line, this is not really for US market cars and I'll tell you guys why. So, this port and this barb port are NPT. These top two are metric for either a JDM or a UK. Uh, these size ports actually go on our front water neck, so. Um, ignore these two. This oil drain plug bolt just happened to be the right M16 size. These are just plug. These are just to uh, block off the water outlets. I'm not even going to use that sensor. Similarly, I have an aftermarket water temp gauge, so I went from uh, an adapter to my 1/8 NPT. Um, why do I say this is not really for U.S. market cars? The two BSVS that are on our water necks don't fit in here. If you are running standalone, um, I wish there was a proper NPT fitting so I could put proper sensors back here. I'm sorry to say this is like a great try, but this is almost for like Japanese and UK cars only. This thing's so pretty, like even this um, recess cutout for this O-ring, no more messing around with silicone or gaskets. And um, yeah, you know, great SQ quality, but Unfortunately, not really suited for U.S. cars. Uh, one other thing, um, if you guys know U.S. cars, there's one more little port. It's a 5 16th port, and yeah, that 5 16th port goes right here and then feeds the idle air control. So in our case, we're going to go with an electric idle air control from Panic, but again, not really suited for a US spec car, right? Because if I was gonna put this on my, you know, factory car, I need to figure out another T situation and packaging over here. Um, more nonsense than the normal person wants to deal with just to have the, um, you know, US specific port for the uh, idle air control. All right, day three, here we are. So the part I've been dreading for the past seven years is that uh, ARP stud. So if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, let's go take a look. The distributor is gonna foul that ARP stud in the front. I actually cut the front nub off of my distributor just to make it easier for myself. But the other way is just to grind down the end of it to a point. I'm gonna be running a small port distributor in this, so this stud's still gonna give me issues. The newest kit have one shorter stud which goes right here that prevents this issue. So we're going to modify this stud to get it to fit. Oh yeah, by the way, that, that ARP kit over there for the customer car, the ARP head studs. Those are actually wrong. Oh yeah, you see all these things are the same length. On the intake side, they're supposed to take shorter studs. So five of these are supposed to be short and then five like longer regular length. So hopefully I can exchange or return this thing. I know ARP is on like super back order these days. All right, so I remember back in the day when ARP made the revision to their kit and uh, someone actually contacted ARP, I remember this off the Club 4AG forums, that um, the acceptable fix was actually just to cut the top portion of this off. If you notice, there's an Allen to help you, uh, not, to comp not to torque, but help you seat these things. So I used a uh, caliper and four mil is about what it's gonna clear that end of this distributor. So I'm gonna, I got my tape, I'm gonna cut about four mil. Um, I'm also gonna try to put a slit in the top of this so I can get a flat head just to help seat this thing because you can cut twice but this thing is not going to grow anymore so all right we got our stud cut I got a brand new stud next to the other one just to show you guys how much I cut off um, just about four or five mil 
You can see I put a slit in the top so I can get a flathead in there just to install this guy. All right, here we are. Head studs and bolts are in. Got a brand new distributor in there to test fit since uh, the other one isn't gonna be that accurate. This light is also not gonna be that accurate. Come on, light. So yeah, you can see it. See it right there where I put a slit in there. And then I'm gonna turn the distributor. And yeah, sure enough, doesn't foul it. Um, I put a flashlight through there. We got a, we got enough clearance. I don't want to take any more off of that stud. Um, we're just gonna call that good. Um, once again, new kits. They already include one short stud for the distributor side. But um, if you have an old kit and they're doing your head gasket, you can go ahead and trim that stud so you don't have to mess with your. stuff it's kind of like an hour here hour there come on the weekend try to grind it out <laughs> that's kind of how it is but yeah here we are doing the water pump there's one thing there's one cool trick I wanted to show you guys real quick so all right so that o-ring right there you guys who are familiar with Toyota's probably know that o-rings a nightmare a lot of Toyota's have that same style water pump um, for sure 4a Jay-Z engines and the trouble is it's hard to get that guy to stay put while you bolt the water pump on. This o-ring kind of has to like form fit in there. It always wants to fall out. So what's the trick I want to show you guys? Probably my all time favorite consumable product or uh, chemical at this point, Permatex high tech gasket sealant. So um, I'll just show you guys what this looks like. You can see it's like it doesn't dry all the way. Open this up, I'll show you guys what the can looks like. Yeah, open this up, show you guys. It's like this stringy, tacky stuff. It comes out as a liquid. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. And so yeah, this is the stuff you're actually supposed to use, not RTV. When you're trying to get a valve cover to stay in there, get an O-ring to stay in there. I just put a little bit on my water pump gasket because there was like a little bit of pinholes on the, uh, the housing side. This is the stuff you're supposed to use, not RTV. And uh, because this stuff doesn't completely dry, this will not clog engine components. So yeah, this is exactly my trick. I just coat the O-ring with this. And you guys can see right there, I was able to press it into place and that gasket sealant's gonna stay into the block and not fall out while I do the three bolts from the water pump to the back of the engine block. Just wanted to show you guys that trick real quick. I see it all the time. People put a bunch of RTV right there. Don't do that. Get the correct O-ring. Use the Permatex gasket sealant. You're going to have zero leaks and zero problems. Another small update, just something I was thinking about. It's usually better if you set a goal for yourself to achieve by the end of the day. So you have something to uh, look out for. <laughs> look forward to, and then you can watch the clock and see how close you are to that goal. Uh, today's goal, resealing the oil pan and then also getting the oil pump on. This thing, um, J160 swap plus the JSP mounts and the Cusco mounts, so that means the uh, engine sits very close to the subframe. Normally when you reseal the oil pan, there you shouldn't need to like unbolt the engine mounts or anything. You, should, you can just take the pan off, but you know, um, in this case I had to do some stuff. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can see up there, I have a engine hanger hanging the top of the engine just by the, the two engine mount hooks. For a little bit of added safety, I have this pole jack just supporting the trans. All right. And basically what I did is just lower the subframe. So keep the engine in the same spot, but lower the subframe. And you, you guys can see that gives me a ton more clearance to uh, take the pickup, windage tray, and then oil pan off. Also, if you didn't know, Oil pan's got to come off to replace the oil pump too. Really close, just mocking this up. This is the Jixer adapter manifold from Dan ST Engineering in the UK. Um, I'm having a little back and forth problem with them right now. If you guys notice, it's pretty obvious these bolt holes don't line up. And I'm basically at a stalemate right now where like they're telling me to uh, grind these out. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, I paid for a manifold for a 4A. I shouldn't have to, you know, modify these anymore. And uh, their argument is like, well, we've sold hundreds of these and we think that, you know, the welding process uh, sucked in these holes. So that's why these holes don't line up. But yeah, it doesn't really sound like they want to help me out. So 
uh, seems like I'm gonna have to spend another weekend hogging out these holes to get this manifold to fit. Um, another thing, I assume this big port's for the brake booster, although we're not gonna run this. I think this is kind of, uh, I'm just gonna say this is kind of dumb actually because you actually want the um, vacuum from all these plenums combined. So we're gonna run a vacuum distribution block and one of the ports on that distribution block will go to the brake booster. I'm not an expert, but I think you have vacuum problems, um, like inconsistent vacuum to the brake booster just by running off of one of these throttles. So I'm going to find a plug for this. Brand new ASIN silver top oil pump from Battle Garage. Um, it's hilarious. ASIN stuff. Uh, pretty much. ASIN was the manufacturer for Toyota. I guess still is. You can see right there. You can make out the TO and then the A is still visible at the end. But yeah, pretty much this was a Toyota pump that just <laughs> they had to, somebody at the factory had to die grind this off. So yeah, thank you Battle Garage for the pump. Only got 30,000 miles on it. I don't care. These are inexpensive enough. I'm just going to replace this guy. So yeah, let's continue work. Hopefully when we come back, at least the oil pump will be on and we will get this pan and this windage tray cleaned up, all the silicone off. Uh, probably... Your guys' favorite job, favorite job, also cleaning silicone and old stuff. Oh boy, let's get to it. All right, almost ready to put the oil pan and the witness tray on. Just wanted to show you guys some cool stuff while the uh, crankcase is open. And then also some quick tips about doing an oil pan installation. All right, so pretty cool. I hope you guys can see. A um, long time ago when I built this engine, deburred the uh, crankcase, actually. <laughs> the whole crankcase. The porous cast iron actually traps oil. You actually want all that oil in the pan, not on the walls of the uh, engine block crankcase. You want all that to return to sump as fast as you can. Also, the deburr work cleans up some of the casting flash and casting sand that could be trapped in there and potentially cause uh, engine damage. New oil pumps on. I installed the main seal into the pump first and then put the oil pump on. Um, I know some other manufacturers don't advise that, um, but uh, just for example, RB engines, the oil pumps are sold with the seal already in it. Um, I've never had a problem on a 4A doing it this way. Uh, these two studs sometimes are missing in 4A blocks, um, which is okay. These studs are discontinued from the factory, but what will work is actually the water pump pulley stud. So I'm going to put two studs in there. Why are we doing that? So order of operations, uh, windage tray, oil pickup, and then the oil pan. What I found is what these studs help out with is when I stick the windage tray on first, it'll catch on these threads and preventing the windage tray from falling down so that I can just leave it up there and have both hands free to bolt on the oil pickup and then bolt on the oil pan. I've, otherwise I've had to <laughs> get two extra hands to help me out, hold up the windage tray and then, you know, it's a mess of four hands. So yeah, windage tray is clean. I'm just gonna break clean and towel the gasket sealing surface. I'm going, and then uh, RTV on this side. Um, the other side, I'm actually gonna RTV the oil pan side. Got the oil pan in the washer. Before you put this pan back on, you wanna make sure that these rails are all straight. Uh, my particular favorite method, get us, get the right size piece of wood and um, lay this on a flat surface and then hammer down all of these hammer down the outer rail if these rails aren't straight the pan's going to be wonky and it actually might leak in some areas so yeah obviously we're losing some daylight so yeah let's uh get this stuff cleaned up and silicone on dog is also not amused and very tired probably want to go home huh dexter all right awesome oil pans on yeah, it's getting a lot later than I wanted to, so we're gonna wrap up for tonight. I'm just gonna bolt up the subframe so the engine's uh, sitting on something, and then I can take down the engine hanger that I got on top. But yeah, let's go uh, take a look at some key points on that oil pan. If you notice on this rail, that's just about all the silicone I want to squeeze out. Um, if you can imagine any more than that, it's also getting squeezed out onto the engine side right there. So with experience, it'll you'll know how much silicone to bead to apply on the rail of the oil pan. Also, sometimes the service manual will say, but um, this is good. That tells me that I got complete coverage, but too much if it's like oozing out, that means that was way too much silicone and there's a risk of it uh, breaking off and then getting sucked into the engine. I totally forgot those two bolts right there for the rear main seal are shorter than the rest of them. Um, if you noticed, I used all new bolts from Toyota for the oil pan. 
right there there's the stud in the nut that I custom got before we wrap up just wanted to show you guys my engine hanger setup so yeah universal setup three point this front hooks easy enough to get I always have problem on 4a cars with this rear hook so you can see I have this chain contraption going on but yeah it's worked perfectly fine for me in the past and again it's always safe just put something under the transmission just to hold up a little bit of the weight as well I got to do engine mounts on my skyline so this is actually gonna be the same technique I'm gonna have to use to change the engine mounts on that on that car also and yeah we'll get a better look at tomorrow when the when we got some sunlight but but yeah that'll be a wrap for today we'll catch you guys tomorrow